going on y'all welcome back to the locks dfs nhl breakdown i am your host adding the rang and i'll be breaking down this eight game main slate on DraftKings and FanDuel for thursday march 28th um it's a crazy day today man it's opening day in baseball uh i'm watching the yankees orioles game right now it feels good doing hockey research it all feels really really good so uh looking forward to breaking out the slate um a few procedural things that I like to do before. Uh, first off, go ahead and leave a like and comment on this video if you want to be entered into our weekly giveaway that we always run. Um, likes and comments help me as well as just getting traction on this video. But what they also do is they enter you into a giveaway. We announce the winner every Monday and we give away a free season pass of the winner's choice just to our most active likers, our most active commenters. Um, so if that is you and you win that season pass, you could use that on baseball, which just started probably the best value to use it on or, or whatever sport of your choosing. So uh, go ahead and leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, we're coming off a really good slate yesterday. Um, this was the lock sheet that we had or that I typed up for you guys. Um, had Patrice Bergeron as a lock, Austin Matthews um, as my favorite point per dollar play. Uh, William Nylander, he went off. Tory Krug, he went off. Uh, it was Pasternak, Marshan, all those guys. So it was a really, really good slate. It helped take me to second place in this tournament right here uh cool five thousand dollars i was actually looking like a lock for first until uh, alex tuck scored on my goalie um philip grubauer literally with like three minutes left cost me first place cost me three thousand but uh was really happy with this result was really happy with the process behind this team uh, and i hope i shared enough of that with you guys i know we had members in our slack chat who were um, ecstatic about uh, some of their results last night based off these plays based off their own research so i've really noticed that our nhl members are just getting sharper and sharper coming up with really 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 good teams on their own um using our vice using our content so we we uh, hope to continue doing that for you guys throughout all these sports i mean uh for baseball if you guys i mean i know i know it's a hockey video and i'm gonna get into the hockey plays very soon but if you guys haven't uh, or if you guys are looking for a baseball content provider or just looking for uh, some fresh faces in the baseball industry um you can definitely check us out at locksdfs.com we're offering really really low uh price passes like 40 dollars a month for mlb um 200 for the whole season it's really a great deal uh, we put a lot of time and effort into that i think you guys will like that a lot and i'm going to start making these mlb videos very very soon so if you haven't already joined us for mlb uh, i encourage you to um or encourage you to later so whenever you want to would love to have you on board so let's get into this nhl slate eight gamer um a lot of high team totals here a lot of potential offense on this slate and we're going to jump right in with these high price centers uh, the guy i'm going to go right back to is going to be jack eichel versus detroit um detroit a team that we've targeted pretty heavily the past week or so two times they didn't work out um and i know members are going to have something to say about uh the jack eichel recommendation but uh, you got to go back to what the, what the numbers show you. And the numbers show Detroit as a really, really bad uh, defensive team through the second half of the season. 14.87 um, high danger chances against per 60. That's third worst in the league over the last 10 games. They're also in the bottom five in expected goals against per 60. I'll show that to you guys, but Corsica is down as always. So um, I'm just going to have to take my word on that. Jack Eichel leading uh, Buffalo in Eichelsi 4 per 60 over the past 10 days or 10 games, excuse me, uh, at just over 18. Um, just an elite spot for him on at 5v5, an elite spot for him. Oops, I kicked on uh, Boston there. Um, an elite spot for him at 5v5, an elite spot for him on the kill. Uh, he's got a couple new line mates with Victor Olofsson and Sam Reinhart. Uh, don't know too much about Victor Olofsson, to be completely honest. But Sam Reinhart is quite cheap. Um, and if Victor Olofsson is on the slate, which he is not. So I guess there's no use in uh, use in uh, projecting him. Um, so with that being said, Sam Reinhardt, though, is a guy that I wanted to get into a little bit as I get into winger. But Jack Eichel, he's taken on an increased offensive responsibility without Jeff Skinner on his line. Jeff Skinner is a really heavy shooter, so he tends to uh, funnel pucks his direction a little bit more when he's skating with him. Um, obviously helps his overall matchup, but uh, when he's kind of on his own on this first line, um, he takes on more of a shot, uh, a shooting floor, res what's the word, a shooting responsibility, um, I think would be the best way to say it. Uh, which is why we've seen his iCourse 4 just slowly tick up uh, as he's gotten these new line mates. So love him as a high price center. Probably my top option. There's a bunch of good options up here, honestly, with Barkov and Sagan and even McDavid. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and roll with Jack Eichel as my uh, favorite option. So 
Scrolling down a little bit farther, um, to give you guys a value center, I really, really like Vincent Trocek here at 5.2K. Um, he's been shooting the puck a lot more in recent games, as you can tell by his past three games. Um, shot the puck four times, seven times, four times. And now he's got an awesome matchup versus the Ottawa team that we've been targeting all season. Again, they're the worst team in the league, high danger chances against per 60 over the last 10 games. And it feels like they've always been like that um, throughout this entire season. Uh, over their respective last 10 games, Vincent Trocek is I course you four per 60. That ranks fifth on the, on the Panthers at 15.89. Um, just an awesome spot for him. He's got a new line mate that I'm going to get into a really cheap guy whose name I cannot pronounce. Uh, so love Vincent Trocek here is my mid price center. Um, that could definitely see myself going here to get, uh, some cheap exposure to Florida with their massive team total at 3.6 currently leading the slate. I believe at 3.6 right behind San Jose. Um, and then Buffalo coming in third at 3.4. Um, that'll do it for center though. We'll go ahead and move on to wing. Uh, the first guy I want to talk about here, we'll actually start. Um, we'll start in the mid price range. I'm going to go ahead and ignore these high price guys. Obviously, a lot of them are in great plays. Um, I think I'm sort of in the same realm as I won yesterday, where I want to pay up, maybe go double, uh, double expensive center like I did yesterday with Austin Matthews and Patrice Bergeron. Uh, could definitely see that happening again today. I love Trocheck, but I also want a heavy exposure to a lot of these guys. So. May try and find you guys some value at wing, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, my favorite wing option as of now is Evander Kane at 6.1K. Uh, this dude is just one of the highest shot rate guys in the league, and he's stepping into one of the best matchups in the league as well. Chicago, a team that we uh, recognize for being um, way up here on the high danger chances against list. Uh, they're only seventh right now, which is an improvement for where they usually are in the bottom three, but they're still allowing the seventh most at 12.56 high danger chances against per 60 expected goals against per 60 still in the bottom five. Um, so just a horrible, horrible offensive team or defensive team. Excuse me. Evander Kane second on uh, the Sharks and I four you four per 60 above 19, which is really an elite rate for any skater. Um, and the news in San Jose that I forgot to mention is that Joe Pavelski is back. Uh, so we have a much more, um, or I guess not. What? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm pretty sure Joe Pavelski is back. I think a uh, daily faceoff is just behind as usual. Let's see. Um, okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe Pavelski remains out. Okay, okay. Pavelski was actually ruled in just not that long ago, so I guess he is ruled out now, um, which is totally fine. Actually, that really helps one of the other plays I want to talk about, um, so we'll get into that. But Evander Kane skating on the second line with Tomas Hurdle and correlating on that second unit power play. Love him on this team. Uh Love him in this spot versus this bad, bad Chicago team. But the guy that now that with this Pavelski news, I'd much rather talk about him is Gustav Nyquist at 5.5K. Initially, he was going to skid on the second line. So I was going to get into how I really like the second line stack. But just literally, like before I started this video, Pavelski was uh, was in on both sides and now he's out. So we'll take it with him being out. Um, and that means Gustav Nyquist is going to skate on this first unit power play and receive first. Uh, sorry, skate on the first line and on the first unit power play. Um, a guy that's got a good shot rate, I course you 4 per 60, above 15. He's incredibly cheap at 5.5K, and he's got one of the best matchups you could ask for. Um, huge fan of Gustav Nyquist tonight. Could definitely see myself playing him, uh, especially with that Pavelski news coming out. Um, scrolling down a little bit farther, though, the guy I wanted to talk about as a Florida value was Vincent Trocek's line mate. Now, I'm just going to look for this guy's name. It's right here. It's Jace. Um, I'm gonna go with Hari Luck. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just ignore the W and go with Jace Hari Luck or Hari Luck. Um, but I I don't know too much about him. All I know is that he's a point per game player in the AHL, which is which is pretty impressive. Um, that is the NHL's minor minor league system. So, uh, he's got great exposure to Vincent Trocheck, an elite skater to be skating with. Um, when you get called up, he's got a decent I Corsi four per sixty. Um, I minimized it now, but it was just above twelve. Um, on Florida. And in addition to skating on uh, Vincent Trocek's line at 5v5, he's also skating there uh, on the power play, um, which is something you don't usually see with guys who get called up. Typically, they get a 5v5 role, but not a power play role. This guy's getting a power play role now, too. Um, so I'm going to take advantage of that at 2.6K. Just think he's an awesome, awesome play uh, in a really, really good matchup uh, again versus Ottawa. 
Um, moving on to defense, this video is dragged on a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I'm partially distracted with baseball, and I spent two minutes talking about baseball to start. Um, but to get into defense, um, just one main defensive option that please lock him in on this slate, and that's Brent Burns. Um, I know he hasn't put up any crazy Brent Burns games recently, but they're coming. As you can see, 10 shots on goal on his last game and was blanked. He didn't pick up anything. Uh, no goals, no assists, which is super, super rare for someone like Brent Burns. And for him not to pick up any block shots recently is rare as well. This guy's going to explode soon, and it could certainly happen in a matchup versus a high-paced, bad defensive team in Chicago. Those are both sort of things that uh, we want to target. Um, scrolling down a little bit farther, though, the other uh, defensive option that I like and that I've been uh, pretty high on in the second half of the season is San uh, excuse me, is uh, Rasmus Dahlin. Uh, they knocked off uh, Rasmus versus Dahlin and off that first unit power play, dropped him to the second. And that kind of gives Dahlin this sole um, power play one quarterback role, which is really coveted. Um, he's been shooting the puck more as the season has gone on. He's got an I Corsi 4 per 60. It was around 8 when the season started. Now it's up to around 10. Um, so he is slowly taking up his shot rate as he gets more comfortable in the NHL. Um, and I love this spot for him. Obviously, I've, I've talked about this matchup ad nauseum, so I'm not going to keep going on about it. But elite, elite spot for him. Um, and then goalie, uh, I'm not going to mention too much about goalie. All I will say is that make sure your goalie is correlated with your skaters so that if your skaters do well, ideally your goalie gets the win. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really all there is to say about goalie. So with that all being said, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Make sure to leave a like and comment if you did enjoy and to be entered into our weekly giveaway. Um, I hope you guys win a ton of money tonight. You can reach out to me on Twitter at really Addy if you have any questions, uh, about NHL, NBA, or I shouldn't say NBA, reach out to Christian about NBA um, at By Hardy. But you can reach out to me about NHL, MLB, anything you really want, personal questions, go ahead and send me a DM, send me a tweet, and I will respond to you. So um, appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope you win a ton of money, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Peace.